All right, YouTube, a uh, special treat tonight. This is a uh, Lycoming four cylinder engine crankcase and crankshaft. And for those of you that don't know, cylinders bolt on here, 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 and here. Crankshaft goes right through the middle here. And the whole caboodle, the whole case, splits in half right down the middle. Camshaft there, crankshaft there, sump goes on the bottom. And hold it all together. Lots of lots of attachments around here. Lots of through bolts across the bearings and some of these cylinder hold down studs, I think. This pair. Mm, nope, sorry. This pair here. Come through on the other side. The cylinders are slightly staggered and offset. Um, this pair here come through to the back of this cylinder here. So there must be another pair here on the front. This pair here come through to hold this cylinder on here. And that provides a pretty fair means of holding this thing together. All right, now the purpose of this video is just to quickly explain something that I've posted in a comment on the Flying Reporter's last video about oil pressure. Um, it's, it's a result of a, a TB10 flying along with a unreliable oil pressure gauge and happily declaring, you know, there's plenty of oil pressure because the light doesn't come on and if you move the pitch control, it'll come back. I've dealt with that in a comment. But I'll just try and briefly explain why why there's a something to watch for here with what happens to this end happened to this engine. All right, we're now looking into the engine through one of the cylinder holes. Now, this um, let's get the light right. This engine came extremely close to a catastrophic failure because of a problem that does happen on some Lycomings. Because of the way the cylinders bolt down and hold the crankcase halves together, obviously where they, where they join here on the main bearings, there's a bearing shell inside here that has to be clamped tight enough, and it's located with tangs, tight enough not to shift in the case halves, but it needs to maintain its correct clearance on the crankshaft to have a film of oil so that it's correctly lubricated and correctly functioning and you've got good oil pressure. And uh, that doesn't always happen. There are a couple of little gotchas on a Lycoming. This is rare, but if they've had cylinder work midlife and the procedure for talking down the cylinders hasn't been followed religiously, there are some things that can go wrong there because these, these, if you just do one cylinder, these through studs are an interference fit. When you release the torque, it's possible for the torque nut the other side to pull the stud a few thou back. When you retorque this cylinder this side, you must retorque the other side simultaneously. Otherwise you could have a stud that shifted slightly back, relaxed the torque on this side and didn't pull back through. So your cylinder the opposite side and consequently your main bearing can come loose. There's also, a, the torquing procedure is a wet torque and the last bit of it ideally should be done in one movement so you don't get you know, pause halfway, get a bunch of static friction build up and it might not move. You want to go to the initial figure first and then your last figure torqued up in a nice smooth movement. They're awkward to get round, you can get a false torque. There's a few things that can go wrong when you do cylinder work on an older Lycoming engine. It just needs careful attention paid to it. It's good standard practices, but it doesn't always get done. And what it can result in occasionally is um, the preload on these studs and consequently across the main bearings that holds the shells in place is incorrect. Sometimes it just happens anyway that the case halves after very high hours come apart and start to fret away at the foot there. And then every so often if the case half was already fretted when you put the cylinder on and you've talked it down, you put too much, too much load on the main bearing that could nip the crank 
and if you haven't torqued it down properly it will start to fret gradually loosen up and the main bearing shell can move for that reason i don't know exactly the sequence on this one but the main bearing did move its tang its tang cut a big groove around here and the crankshaft which has gone very rusty now got plugged almost solid with uh, yes this crank pin almost solid with metal it came through from this main bearing through the cross drilling and the point is it was it, the filter was absolutely jammed with metal it was at the point of catastrophic failure or seizure anyway so what's my point with all this the point is that what the operator noticed on this aircraft was that just for a couple of flights in cruise the oil pressure dipped down below where it normally would be not particularly low just a little glitch um, and then it appeared to return to normal for a flight or two and they casually ran it over to us on Monday morning said do you think there's anything wrong with it and when we pulled the filter you've never seen so much metal in all your life however the the reason I'm told for that by the engine overhaulers is that when the main bearing starts to shift or tears itself up obviously the oil pressure will go down a little bit because you've got clearances here that you didn't have before once the bearing shifts sufficiently to cover this oil hole okay so the shell has shifted the oil hole in the shell and the oil hole in the case are misaligned whichever bearing is shifted is no longer being fed with oil and the cross drilling that takes the oil to the crank pin for that bearing is also not being fed with oil so you've got two you've probably got when it happens you've likely got one main bearing and one crank pin not being lubricated and that puts the engine on a fairly short-lived spiral of destruction now luckily they got this one to us in time my point here is that you need a reliable oil pressure gauge because the first sign of this particular failure can be that the oil pressure just dips down in the cruise for a few minutes below where it used to be and then appears to return to normal. So something to keep an eye on. Oil pressure varies a lot on engines. On takeoff, when the engine's cold on a Lycoming, it can be very high right into the red, 100 psi. Um, but normally you'll have a place, a happy place where it settles down to in cruise. You go lower at idle on a hot engine. But if you see a change in your cruise oil pressure, runs low for a little while and appears to return to normal for no apparent reason, you haven't had the relief valve looked at, nothing else, it's cause for concern. And that's why you need a good oil pressure gauge on an old like aiming. So flying around with one that doesn't work and saying, don't worry, there's plenty of oil pressure because the red light's not on, isn't true.